Hello students today we'll discuss about the stages of the tooth development now we know the tooth development it's a continuous process however the developmental history of a tooth is divided into several morphological stages for descriptive purposes we have the bud stage cap stage bell stage and advanced bell stage now as we already discussed about the formation of the dental lamina we have these little down growths from the dental lamina these represent the beginning of the enamel organ of the tooth bud as cell proliferation continues each enamel organ increases in size it sinks deeper into the ectomesenchyme due to differential growth changes in the shape first we have in the form of a bud then we have a cap then bell and later advanced bell this is the bud stage so we have the centrally located polygonal cells and peripherally located low columnar cells the area of ectomesenchyme which is basically the ectomesenchymal condensation immediately subjects into the enamel organ that is called the dental papilla however the condensed ectomesenchyme that surrounds both the tooth bud and the dental papilla that would be called the dental sac but these dental papilla and the dental sac they become more well defined in the later stages of the tooth development now this was all about bud stage bud why since we have a bud like structure so these are basically the primordia of the enamel organ Now we all know the tooth bud it continues to proliferate however there is unequal growth in different parts of the tooth bud which leads to the formation of a cap this is basically characterized by the invagination which is seen on the deep surface of the bud so this is the shape of a cap so now we'll discuss about the cap stage So here we have the oral ectoderm then we have the dental lamina and here the there is enamel organ which is basically in the form of a cap We have the peripheral cells we have the central cells this is basically the outer and the inner enamel epithelium which will be discussed later Now we have the central polygonal cells these are this is basically known as the stellate reticulum what happens is there is water which is drawn from the ground substance which is drawn into the uh, into the enamel organ from the dental papilla as a result of which these polygonal cells they become star shaped and hence the name stellate reticulum Now this was the dental lamina and here we have the outer enamel epithelium which is basically lining the convex surface and it consists of cuboidal cells and then we have inner enamel epithelium which is lining the concavity and it consists of tall columnar cells in between them we have the stellate reticulum which we already discussed now the area of ectomesenchyme which surrounds the tooth bud there is an area of ectomesenchymal condensation immediately subjects into the enamel organ which is known as the dental papilla but then we have the condensed ectomesenchyme which surrounds the dental papilla as well as the tooth bud that is known as the dental follicle or also known as the dental sac Now this was all about cap stage however there are some temporary structures which are formed during this stage this basically disappears before the enamel formation begins Now here we have the polygonal cells in the center these are basically densely packed and this is known as the enamel knot There is a vertical extension which extends from the enamel knot to the outer enamel epithelium which is known as the enamel cord. 
these both enamel knots and cords they act as a reservoir for the dividing cells then there's a point where the enamel cord meets the outer enamel epithelium this is known as the enamel in navel which is basically a small depression next we have the bell stage now as the invagination of the epithelium it deepens and these margins they continue to grow the enamel organ it assumes the shape of a bell the crown shape is determined in the bell stage the crown shape is determined now we in have the, the junction stage. of the outer and the enam inner enamel epithelium this is basically the cervical loop which is an area of intense mitotic activity and it's responsible for the root formation so here we have the vestibular lamina then we have the dental lamina then we have the enamel organ which is basically in the form of a bell now these are the layers first of all we'll have the inner enamel epithelium as already discussed these epithelial these cells they differentiate into ameloblast which is responsible for the enamel formation and what happens is this inner enamel epithelium it exerts an organizing influence on the underlying ectomesenchymal cells of the dental papilla so that these cells they differentiate into odontoblast which is responsible for the dentine formation then we have another layer which is basically known as the stratum intermedium this is between the inner enamel epithelium and the stellate reticulum now what is this is very uh, important for enamel formation this stratum intermedium but it is seen that this is this layer is absent in the root formation and that's why the enamel it's not present in the root portion now we have the stellate reticulum after stratum intermedium and the outer enamel epithelium so basically this outer enamel epithelium it now flattens to low cuboidal cells now we have the stellate reticulum this is basically before the enamel formation begins the stellate reticulum it collapses which reduces the distance between the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium this basically occurs before the enamel formation because normally the ameloblasts they derive their nutrition from the dental papilla but as the enamel formation begins there is a barrier in between so now because of the stellate reticulum it collapses there is the reduced distance between the inner enamel epithelium and the outer enamel epithelium so now the inner enamel epithelium cells they derive the nutrition from the dental sac now this is the dental lamina for the deciduous tooth bud it is seen that there is a distal extension of this dental lamina which is known as the successional lamina as already discussed in the previous video this is responsible for the formation of the permanent tooth bud now later on this dental lamina it begins to lose its contact from the overlying ectoderm and starts degenerating however there are remnants which will be seen of the dental lamina and these are known as cell rests of series so now we'll have the dental papilla cells this is basically responsible for the formation of pulp and then we have the dental sac the whole of thing whole of this thing is called the dental sac from which the periodontium originates so let's have a brief overview of the layers of the enamel organ now starting from the inside to the outside we'll have the different layers 
let me draw them So starting from inside, we'll have the first layer, which will be the dental papilla. Then we have the odontoblast. Then we have the ameloblast. Then we'll have the stellate, sorry, stratum intermedium. And then we have the stellate reticulum. Finally, we have the outer enamel epithelium. And finally, the dental sac. So next, we have the advanced bell stage. Now, the only differentiating feature between the early and the advanced bell stage is the formation of the heart tissue. The advanced bell stage is basically characterized by the beginning of the mineralization and the root formation. So we have the ameloblast that are responsible for the enamel formation and then we have the yellow colored which we have the odontoblast. So this is responsible for the dentine formation. Now then we have the surrounding outer enamel epithelium and the collapsed stellate reticulum. Here we have the dental sac which surrounds the enamel organ and from here the that is the dental sac the periodontium originates that is the pedial bone and the cementum and that is responsible for the root formation and here we have the dental papilla from which the dental pulp originates that is basically enclosed under the heart tissue that is the enamel and dentine. Here we have the cervical loop that is basically the junction of the outer and the inner enamel epithelium. This is responsible for the root formation. This basically gives rise to a sheath which is known as Hertwig's epithelial root sheath that is responsible for the formation of the root. However, an important point to be noted here is that the stellate reticulum and the stratum intermedium these are absent in the cervical loop. Now, at the cervical loop, there is a horizontal extension which is known as the epithelial diaphragm. This epithelial diaphragm is responsible for determining the number of roots present in the teeth. Now, as the epithelium proliferates, it is important to be noted here is that this epithelium, it proliferates coronal to the epithelial diaphragm. And then there is differentiation of the odontoblast which is responsible for the formation of the radicular dentine. And that is results in the lengthening of the root sheet. So first of all, we'll have the root sheet, Hertwig's epithelial root sheet in the center. On one side, we'll have the radicular dentine and on the other side, we'll have the connective tissue cells. So basically what happens is because of the degeneration of the Hertwig's epithelial root sheet, there's a direct connection which is formed between the radicular dentine and the connective tissue cells. And because of that, these connective tissue cells, they start differentiating into cementoblast, fibroblast and osteoblast, which is basically responsible for the formation of cementum periodontal ligament and bone, that is the periodontia. Another uh, important point here is... For example, if the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath is not established prior to the dentine formation, that means the dentine formation is not has not taken place and the Hertwig's epithelial root sheath, it starts degenerating. There's a gap which is found in the dentinal wall, which basically results in a direct connection between the root portion and the periodontium. So basically, there's a direct connection between the inner side of the tooth and the outer side that is towards the periodontium. This is responsible for the formation of the accessory canals. So this was all about the stages of tooth development. Hope almost everything would be clear. If there are any doubts, kindly comment and let us know. And if you want any specific videos, please let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much.